So good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everyone, to all our viewers, attendees from all parts of the world. On behalf of Export Promotion Council for Handicrafts, I'd like to welcome all of you. Thanks for joining in. And uh, this is yet another knowledge session organized by EPCH. And this time, as part of our four-day virtual IHGF textiles fair. In these extraordinarily challenging times, all businesses are facing new challenges each and every day. In such times, growing one's business and mitigating risks at the same time is extremely crucial. We'll be talking about uh, online business in home and lifestyle industry, pitfalls, and how to proceed. Before that, uh, we'd like to also welcome uh, all our uh, eminent guests who are here with us. We have with us uh, Vice Chairman EPCH, Sri Rajkumar Malhotra ji. Welcome, sir. We also have uh, with us Sri R.K. Verma ji, Executive Director EPCH. Welcome, Verma ji. We have with us uh, Mr. Rajesh Rava, Joint Director EPCH. And of course, our panelists are very eminent panelists, I must say, Deepak Gaba and Monica Simon. Welcome. And I would also welcome all the participants who have joined us uh, today for this knowledge sharing session. Leading the session will be Monica and Deepak, as I said, together they have conceptualized, developed and delivered successful multi-million dollar programs for large retail chains in Germany. As a team, they have been tremendously successful in bringing growth through private label businesses to both retailers and wholesalers. In this knowledge share seminar, they would be sharing with us their experience and suggestions about what is essential for success in the online business, both in the front end of product and marketing and the back end of sourcing and supply chain management. Let me uh, give uh, a little more introduction about uh, both uh, Deepak and Monica. Mr. Deepak Gawa is founder and CEO of 3S. He's an experienced and qualified international business expert, holds an MBA in international business from Delhi School of Economics, a premier institute of India. And of course, we have Monica from Germany joining in. She has over 20 years of experience in building brands, sourcing and merchandising of home and lifestyle products. She's a creative powerhouse. I must say that full of ideas and positive energy. In her past position, she has uh, led Home24 and Hofner in their private label brand development and sourcing. Together, Deepak and Monica have been working for last uh, 10 years and it's been a very fruitful partnership. And without any further ado, I would request Mr. Deepak Gaba to begin the presentation. Thank you, Miduji. Thanks for the nice introductions. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, EPCH for giving us an opportunity to share the experience with uh, our audience. Uh, first of all, I'd like to start uh, by complimenting EPCH for the textile show that is going on right now, and uh, it's live. Uh, like any new thing, there was a lot of hesitation, and I was also like wondering how it's going to be. But yesterday, I spent time there, and uh, truly, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's worthwhile. It's, uh, there are buyers over there, and there are uh, exporters who are active, a lot of uh, conversation going on, a lot of exchange of, uh, uh, you know, product information, company information is going on. We were, I was very excited to see that. So compliments for that. In a short time, uh, this platform has come in. Uh, it's going to evolve, I believe, by the next month when the main trade show is going to come up. So it will evolve. And also our uh, supplier partners uh, have to do the work now because EPCH has done the work. Now supplier partners have to really, you know, uh, improve their photography and presentations and uh, upskill themselves to get onto this uh, digital platform. Uh, today's topic Deepak is. Ji, uh, sorry, Deepak Ji, sorry to interrupt yes. you. Uh, I can see on my screen here Mr. Ravi K. Pasi. He's the chairman of uh, EPCH. Um, let's welcome him before we proceed with you. Yes, please. Yes. Do that. Welcome, uh, Mr. Pasi. Good afternoon. Welcome, Thank you so much. And uh, I'm uh, listening right now. 
and uh, i think we have to start uh, this program and it is very important uh, during uh, this show also and um, thank you very much and please carry on this thanks thank you pasi ji uh, it's all the leadership you know that basically gives the direction and uh, vision and uh, the mission to the team to take uh, the good work forward and uh, rakesh ji and you have been doing a tremendous job so compliments for this initiative uh, i will uh jump into my presentation now just give me one second and i'll share my screen so we are talking about uh, online business and on the right platform that is textile fair uh sourcing knowledge sharing uh engagement commerce everything is happening and i think 6 uh, months back or 3 months back we could not think of that we wouldn't have a real physical fair and we will have this we will have to operate in this online has become an essential thing in our life now it's not an option it's a given so we picked up this topic uh, in fact just to give you a brief background about myself you know i started my company 20 years back and i started with an online company i started with a mail order company and that's a company which has been into online business for almost like 75 years plus so i learned this trade with them and they have expanded they have grown very very well it's one of the largest online companies in uh, education and gift and supplies in the us market uh and with me today i have my long time partner uh, miss monica simon monica brings with her tremendous experience um, i would say a lot of energy positivity ideas and intelligence business acumen uh, which is hard to find in one person she is able to combine that so it's a very very she is a very very unique person in the whole industry and i was as i was talking to my friends earlier before the webinar started that perhaps monica is the only women buyer in the hard furniture area in uh, german business because rest all is dominated by men and that's a fact so i would leave monica to explain further about her experience and uh, achievements so today's topic is source from india 3 years growth essentials we are running this growth series uh, that we call the green spaces for growth and online business how to succeed in that the soft and hard part of that is what we are covering today so monica will be speaking about the science and art of online business front end which is more about the soft aspect of the business the, but the very very critical aspect uh, and i will be talking about how to minimize the risk in the supply chain and uh, making sure that when you are busy engaging the customers on the front end there are no spaces left that uh, can eat your budget or it can destroy the business so 3s our vision is to bring the best of india to the world and we do that by bringing more than 300 factories from india we have very strong uh, vendor partners in india and uh, uh, and we take every season nice products from them to the uh, to our customers and we are working with uh, uh, customers from europe us and other parts of the world monica simon as i explained she has over 20 years of experience and uh, building brands just give me a second i need to minimize the screen so that i don't talk wrong things and she has worked with hofner uh, which is the largest furniture second largest furniture chain in uh, germany after uh, ikea and lutz and then she was heading home 24 her expertise is uh, private label development furniture textiles and combination i'll skip my intro here our audience profile we prepared this presentation uh, for these four audiences one is the retail companies looking to launch their own private label business uh, that's one domain where we really uh, excel uh, businesses having stores and looking to go online uh, online businesses that want to minimize risk in the supply chain management in india manufacturers to go online so these audiences will find information uh takeaways from the presentation that uh, i'll be running through in the first part and then later on monica will take over today's takeaway when it all started where is the industry and where are you in this journey what it takes to succeed what are the risks 
throughout the supply chain and throughout the business and the key drivers for growth. I'll give like two seconds to all of you to identify who these guys are. You know, they were also graduating when I was finishing my MBA. In fact, they were, they are younger than me and uh, I was finishing my MBA and they uh, about, I think 98. And at that time I had a Simmons uh, phone with me. That was my biggest achievement as far as technology was concerned. My first job and the first phone. And uh, at that time, internet was, mm, we were not thinking about it. I used to work with uh, one major multinational company and fax was the only thing that we had. Every morning, go there, collect the faxes, come back and uh, do the business and wait for another 24 hours to buy us to wake up and send more faxes. Communication was like that, 98. And these guys were young, but they were smarter than me, of course. They are Steve and Nirav Shah. Lots of people know them. They met in Cornell University in 2000. Uh, they met in Cornell University in a summer program and bonded very well. And in 2002, they founded Wayfair. It's only been 17 years and they built a company which is, take a guess, about $9.2 billion, $9.1 billion. This is the power of online businesses. Uh, it's very, very difficult to have other businesses that can grow to these sizes. So it gives us a lot of vision, energy, passion, and people who believe in growth to look at, you know, by looking at these guys, these success stories and do something like that. So I picked up the top 20 uh, online furniture destinations in the US. Wayfair, Lulu and Georgia, Amazon, I'm not going to talk about uh, Amazon, it's a small company. Urban Outfitters, Walmart, One Kings Lane, Jason Home, West Elm, World Market, Anthropology, Dot and Bowl, Lexmode, App B, App to B, Pottery Barn, Home Depot, Rejuvenation, Target, Ballot Design, ABC Carpet and Home. So this is from Good Housekeeping. They say that these are the 20 companies where you're headed if you want to buy something in furniture and lifestyle. Choices may vary, opinions may vary. So, but this is what the Good Housekeeping says. Market facts. Uh, for the furniture and lifestyle business, world over, market is expected to grow at plus 5% across all the world geographies. And the country which is going to lead this growth is China. It's way beyond ahead of all other markets. There is growth potential everywhere, but China is going to lead the world market when it comes to growth in this area. In terms of categories, largest category is uh, living and dining room, then followed by bedroom, kitchen, lighting, plastics, and other furniture area. Market landscape has department stores, mass merchants, home improvements, online and mail, mail order retailers, uh, and direct online merchants have started to give very stiff competition to brick and mortar stores. For example, Wayfair. It has given a lot of competition to the retailers in, in the US. So if we want to get into the business, what are the key ingredients for success? Uh, I think all the businessmen over here, entrepreneurs here, young generation here, these are the six factors without which nobody can succeed. We can start a business, but if you don't have a vision, there will not be a direction. If you don't have passion, it won't last. If you don't have values, you will be lost. If you don't have team, it's going to go crazy every day. And if you don't have a mission, then you don't know what you're doing. And if you don't have action, then rest all is plan and thinking. There is no action. So action is critical. If we have these key ingredients for successes, then let's go forward and look into what we have for the business. We need to define our space and place in the market. It is really cluttered. It is already very cluttered. There is no space for anybody in this market. Uh, so you need to be sure where you are going to be and how people are going to see you. What is your business model? What you're going to offer? What is your solution? Is your solution a chair or is your solution a full room? or it's a solution is a shelving system. So depending who you are, solution is critical and solution is not just product anymore. Solution is also uh, the service, the presentation, the experience, the whole 24 yards. Brand, without this, nobody will look at you. They will buy something, but there won't be future if you don't have a brand. Market segment that you're gonna target, 
customers identification customer segmentation is critical competitive landscape mapping is essential because it's a hugely competitive landscape you can come with any amount of money google is going to consume everything you can come with billion dollar they will take everything happily in advertisement so it's it's highly competitive it sucks and it takes all the money that have somebody has in his pocket so essential is developing a brand key to capture the essence of your business and let that be its dna stick to it define your space go forward uh i love this company william sonoma group i mean they are a success example in the last years uh i i you know i i used to work for target and uh, uh in 1999 i can relate a story when i was working in the office uh, at that time tj max was starting and tj max was like a crap they were buying junk whatever we could not sell to anybody tj max was buying that so tj max was starting with another strategy at that point of time and william sonoma was stores at that time with the pottery barn uh as a as a key brand in the last 20 years they have evolved into nine brands they have evolved into online business they have evolved into offline business a beautiful model to benchmark and what they have is every brand is different every brand has a story every brand has a definition and they are perfect in each and every space westel what is their story it's sustainability the key is sustainability whatever the source whether it's craft craftsmanship organic products sustainable sourcing fair trade certifications so now if a manufacturer is looking at to sell to westel they have to get into this story they have to have the sustainability in place only they can sell to this kind of company if an online company wants to launch a brand or if somebody wants to go with his own company so they have to have this beautiful space so the customer knows they want sustainable products where to go westel okay perfect you'll find it handcrafted uh, you know sustainable products go there and look at it now everybody wants sustainable and where they will head westel another brand rejuvenation as the story says everything we do is built on our dedication to quality craftsmanship whether it's a heritage piece from our antiques and vintage collection or new thoughtfully designed products made to last rejuvenation lighting company selling beautiful light classic lights but then opportunities come in and they evolve they evolve into other categories with uh, with with the power of uh, william sonoma group and now they have everything so what are the trends and drivers for online furniture and lifestyle business these are the key take away takeaways you can say ready to assemble furniture uh my presentation is more targeted towards uh, furniture and uh, uh the home accents part of the business hard lines and then so, uh, you know monica can fill in the soft lines part of it because it's comparatively easier to do textiles business from the logistics point of view but it's very difficult to do uh you know hard lines and furniture business on online because logistics is a nightmare as we go you know further down into my presentation you will see where the key risks are and there furniture is deadly uh small space solutions because uh, young families they want uh, you know smaller products multifunctional products tech embedded into products now you know we need chargers usb fitments on the you know furniture pieces uh, on the shelving so coming up with tech ideas eco friendly materials sustainability uh, earlier in, last week we did a you know session on uh, sustainability i think that webinar is also available there jayesh presented a, a very good you know technical uh, information about sustainable textiles so in case somebody is interested in that part they can go and check out the webinar there design is the key why somebody will come to buy your product without design it won't work influencers this is something i would leave monica to talk about because uh, whatever product you take uh, online you can't sell it if you don't have influencers by your side you have your story and brand in place who is your customer whether you're going to sell directly to consumer going to sell b2b to business is professional or professionals your target designers contractors hospitality business or uses specific like uh, for example now rental 
industry, you know, uh, home rental, furniture and all. So these are kind of spaces which are coming in, ideas that, uh, you know, new entrepreneurs are bringing in and finding their special niche. So you can go web store only, marketplace only, hop on to Amazon and Flipkart and, uh, you know, Overstock and these uh, marketplaces, Wayfair and sell on them or sell through your own brand on a web store, which is very, very difficult and uh, for a smaller company, but bigger companies, of course, they have the budgets to drive that. Store and web store, combinations, marry them all and create your own mix. Choice is up to you. Depends on the consumers that you're targeting. Depends on the brand. Now, business types and value equations. What you will find in the market is these kind of uh, retailers. This is from the manufacturer's point of view that I'm, uh, I took up this slide. Hypermarkets, supermarkets, they are on the lower, seg lower segment, just, uh, you know, functional furniture they sell and uh, very less of decoration, uh, value and discount stores, TJ Maxx, Ross stores, uh, even Target would go into this segment, mass merchants, they fall into this segment where they are selling value and low price products. So cost is the key. Speciality. Now these are speciality stores who want uh, nicer stuff, Vestel. And uh, then moving on to the, you know, higher end of the value chain, designers who are willing to pay more. And then the lifestyle stores who are bringing all the concepts together and creating beautiful stories for the home. Geography. Uh, geography, how big is your dream? How wide do you wanna go? Cities, countries? You got to know that because that's where the first risk come in, comes in, you know? Risk of logistics. This is where uh, you need the merchandise, you need the warehousing, you need distribution, you will have uh, different competition in different countries, uh, local preferences change, the color of finishes of furniture and the products, everything changes. So identifying the geographic landscape is very, very important because it has uh, ramifications on the purchase. It has ramifications on the logistics and warehousing in the back end of the supply chain. Product mix. How wide or narrow you want to go with your assortment? Be very, very specific what you want to do, what you want to achieve, who is your customer, what's your brand. Remain very tight here because it's very exciting to go wide in product mix. But as soon as you decide that you want to have uh, 100 SQs, to buy those 100 SQs, you need to have MOQs, you need to have uh, quantities, replenishment, and building the budget together, 100 SQs are gonna be really crazy. And if you take it to 500, then managing those SQs, it's a warehouse nightmare. And then everything together becomes a crisis. So identify the product mix, keep it very small, keep it tight so that the risk is small. Now, moving on to the product components, here we have uh, furniture materials and challenges. If somebody knows about it, it's perfect. If you don't know what products you're entering into, then there are solid wood options. There are challenges of seasoning, storage, handling, molds, composite woods, where assembly issues come in, metal, rusting, glass, breakage, transportation, packaging. Upholstery is a very, very interesting subject. This is something as a sourcing, you know, as a buying agent, uh, I am challenged to find upholstery in India. I have buyers. I can sell thousands of containers of upholstery, but it just doesn't work in India. And a huge opportunity, but nobody, nobody is able to get it. Because our mindset and our comfort levels that we have for upholstery in India just doesn't fit in with the European taste. Because it's all about feeling. You know, you sit on a sofa, oh wow, it's nice. This is upholstery test. All good buyers do upholstery tests like this. They sit on the chair, it's comfortable. Yes, there is a science behind it, but it is the comfort. So to get that right, you need an upholstery expert. Uh, Monica does a lot of upholstery. She can, she's smiling right now. Yes, so, <laughs> it's one of my favorite categories. Yeah, yeah, one of your favorite categories. And without upholstery, the lifestyle is never complete. So <laughs> India has to do upholstery products and improve the quality. This is what I want. And we, we can sell a lot of, lot of that stuff to our customers. Okay, moving further. This is a big risk area if you are a buyer. Okay, from a customer's point of view, from an importer point of view, this is a big risk area. So keep your risk under control here. This applies to everybody. Watch your budget, stay very close to it. 
and there are two key monsters here take a guess what those monsters are marketing google is your worst enemy when it comes to marketing it's very exciting but they take every everything that one has influencers once you land into this online landscape marketing is is crazy so be very very careful whom you hire for marketing consulting what you do what you invest what you commit here this is a beautiful very interesting game monica can talk about it later this is second killer inventory if all this collection the beautiful assortment doesn't sell or doesn't work this is going to kill the business okay how to source now if we have audience that uh, is interested in sourcing from india is it your cup of tea do you know your dream is in place your brand is in place your product mix is in place do you know where to find the product yes come to igf fair you will find a lot of suppliers here for different product categories you can reach out to the agents like us and we can help you to connect with the uh, uh, with with the suppliers there is a buying agents association which is working very actively headed by christine and doing a lot of work there so good set of people uh, do you know the right suppliers do you know the right price are you sure you will get what you promote, what what was promised so these are uh, very risky areas for an importers from an importers point of view this has to be under control because we covered almost like uh, 25 20 25 minutes of a presentation and still the sourcing has not started so now we just got to the sourcing and this is the tough part it is not there is nothing dreamy here it's it's pure hard work okay product is pure hard work uh, making furniture in jodhpur and jaipur and uh, in firozabad during summer time in june at 45 50 degrees it's no romance it's all very hard work so it has to be under control product development this is a space which kills makes or you know makes or break the business you know especially from an importer point of view it's the heart of the business uh if there is a creative person he has a dream he knows what he wants to do to do he can drive this but if somebody is passionate about the business and doesn't have acumen for creativity then it's it's not going to work whatever kind of vision passion team energy everything that you believe bring you know it's not going to work you need to have the product development right and it's not about the designers it's not about hiring fancy designers from uh, big institutes you know it's about the people who know what the market is people who know what sells in the commercial business i'm talking about it's if if your if your segment is design design very special specific then it's fine but when it comes to the business from specialty down then it's all about commercial business if you want to sell 100 containers 50 containers 20 containers of a, a certain product line it will only work if the product development is right pricing is right materials are right so in the product development process everything has to be considered timing materials cost of the materials standards later on down the line when the testing will come in then is your product ready for that what are the risks for the failure three months of product development paying money to the designers and then wasting so much amount of time the product is not selling okay so what's the fun big risk big big risk so quantity moqs how to manage it especially you know in online uh, initially you need a big wide assortment of product okay and the challenge is you want 500 sqs because a website with 50 sqs looks looks nothing or 100 sqs or 200 sqs uh, look nothing you need a big spread because the competition has lot of product you know wayfair is talking about i don't know about 15000 or how many products online and uh, how to compete with them so we are out competed if we don't have the product and if you want the product and if you, if the buyer goes to the manufacturer they don't have low moqs you know they have their own limitations so production run has to be there so this is where the money has to come in it's a money game and then sales game how to sell there is not so much of demand for uh, for the new brands on the market so how to cover this space is very very challenging that's where uh, i would say the manufacturing committee uh, community exporters have to support the online businesses with the small quantities when they are beginning because once they pick up there are enough quantities enough businesses i remember you know one project i took up with monica we did together when she was uh, leading one online company and this online company was a pure player they were like marketplace okay and they uh, they knew what is selling for them 
but other people were selling so they were not selling so they wanted to do their own private label and monica was responsible for this and we started and i still remember remember the funny quantities that monica asked for do you remember monica how much how many pieces do you want it 20 20 <laughs> 20 15 yes and today i mean that's a very very beautiful and very big business and uh, it has evolved in few years i think it evolved within like 12 months we were doing pretty good there so quantities is a challenge but exporter community manufacturers have to support the new online players on the market side and grow with them help them grow and grow with them purchase is it your game if not then find the right person risk in quality now this is a, a it's it's a hardcore game product performance standards now when you're talking about the online business packaging is no no joke you know i'm working with a big retail company in the us they want to buy 50 pieces for their online shop and 5000 pieces for their uh, stores same product okay and when i'm quoting the difference in packaging uh, difference in the quote because of uh, the ista 3 standards of packaging because of the transit testing because of the inspections that they have installed in the third party on one product is coming 30 dollars a product is costing 50 dollars component cost of quality compliance is 30 dollars on one product because they want to buy 50 pieces for online so business is not viable but for 5000 pieces it's perfect so but quality is critical i can't tell them that don't take ista 3 packaging because if they are buying a dining from here with a glass top it will land there completely crushed if the packaging is not right and they have to ensure that everything is clear because the brand name is at stake it's brand reputation so very critical area and needs to be controlled in detail you need a professional partner to cover this space if even if it's a manufacturer he has to make sure that all these things are critical when they are quoting uh, for the products which are going to go online okay because online you cannot operate without ista standards there is no basic packaging there is no regular export packaging quotations work there you can quote but in the end it's going to be a disaster if it is not covered inspections i will uh, jump through, skip through this area but it needs to be controlled logistics this is where a lot of hidden costs are duties inbound freight outbound freight freight returns freight 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 everywhere there is freight so if the customer doesn't like the product because what he saw online on the picture and then he gets something else return if he has lost the taste for it return and imagine returning a dining table and a sideboard or a product which you sold for uh, maybe 10 dollars or 15 dollars and it is coming back for 5 dollars so this is a killer so the key challenge for most of the companies online companies who are into business is to reduce the return rates how to do that monica can talk about it so that is critical part of the logistics big risk area on time purchase order management on time delivery merchandising this is these are givens these are basics of the business because customer is not going to wait if you don't deliver on time then it is back orders it is cancelled orders it's returns so it's turning into direct loss everything hits the bottom line here so wherever you see the risk here coming on the slide that's directly hitting the bottom line that's hitting the business compliance checklist we are living in a compliance world now you know with covid coming in one more compliance has been added you know covid compliance we have to hygiene ourselves we have to hygiene the factories we have to hygiene everybody already there were so many issues which were there but compliance is a regulatory requirement we have to be compliant to a certain level so that uh, we meet the basic standards i really like those companies who are protected proactive and there are beautiful uh, you know manufacturing company companies in india uh, they are so advanced they don't think about compliance because it's built into their system it's built into their thought process when they make the product when they you know hire people they have already thought about you know taking care of them so personally i believe that compliance should be removed and care should be introduced if we care for our people we don't need social compliance we'll pay them the right salaries if we care for our customers things will be right we'll pack it right we'll do the things right but compliance is a guideline or a checklist that all of us have to stick to so it's a critical hygiene of the business this is the heart if 
if the factories ignore the compliance they have they are bound to go out of the business okay because other people are getting better so all my exporter friends who are here they have to see that they genuinely follow this compliance thing the businesses will come to them automatically maybe not in short term but long term they will win the game once everything is done what you need to do is deliver on time to the customer in full and error free it's a beautiful dream but if we can achieve it then the customer is going to smile and we'll have a beautiful business so from here i would like uh, ms simon to take over and uh, continue this presentation further uh, thank you very much i'll just exit from here monica and you can take over over to you monica thank you deepak ji thank you very much for that presentation medu are you there medu ji sorry <laughs> thank you deepak ji for uh, that wonderful presentation medu ji ko bore kar diya i think <laughs> thank you for bringing home the points through the success stories of wayfair and william sonoma and Re rejuvenation throwing light on numerous significant factors to be kept in mind for the success of online business of especially furniture and hard lines that was um, mr deepak gaba with years of experience and expertise behind him so we would now like uh, as mr deepak mentioned um, to move over to monica who is uh, as i said earlier was a powerhouse of uh, creativity she headed sourcing from uh, for home 24 and hofner groups in germany and is currently uh, spending time with a new baby carl and march a brand for uh, home products she launched last summer so she'll be enumerating uh, on soft lines and creativity and also talk a bit about risk uh, minimizing over to you monica thank you i try to share my screen i hope i will manage it right now um can you see it all yes we can okay but i cannot it says market overview right yes market overview can you see okay. the full screen because my yeah it's there okay perfect um i don't want to focus um so much on online marketing right now because um the big players in the market are very strong there so if you want to compete it will be very difficult because in terms of adwords google adwords marketing super expensive because all these important um words are already um covered by them so if you want to be successful you need either a niche strategy that means you can focus on a particular category or a particular style or you and you have to go other ways but definitely probably you will you will um you have to use platforms like amazon ebay and wayfair so what i want to focus is on the on the market and on yeah on different ideas and not on on not too much on the can you hear me just a second jee sir can you help monica to enlarge the screen in the presentation mode yeah yeah sure i can do that monica, do you see that uh, can you help her the start to the presentation mode on the you know bottom right you see that it's uh, not it's not there anymore that's the problem it's not there it's not there right now okay so i mean we can live with it but if you can find it that would be great i don't know what's different right now let me check or oh, maybe uh, neeraj can take over the screen and uh, help you her take over the so, screen manish manish can you do that Uh, yes wait a sec monica i am just trying to do it oh no i, I now it's there oh yes, i, I got it I yeah is it okay yeah is it okay for you all perfect perfect okay then let's start with the first um slide um i would like to give you an overview about the online business worldwide for furniture and household goods um just as a yeah as a entry to the market Here you can see the both main markets are China and USA with a yeah with a huge turnover in sales uh, but already on place 4 you can find Germany 
in uh, 2018, we had 6.6 .6 billion euros turnover in the furniture segment. And from now on, when I'm talking about the furniture segment, it's always, always furniture and accessories. Because in Germany, the furniture stores are, are full of items which you need for your home to make it nicer. It's bedding, accessories, um, household, wear, everything you can find in our furniture stores. So whenever I'm talking about furniture from now on, I mean the whole segment included household goods, etc. Okay, just an overview about the market sizes. Um, if we have a deeper look into Germany, these are the big players. Otto Group, maybe a lot of people or a few people know that already. Amazon, of course, it's a worldwide uh, game that they are playing. IKEA as well. Bet One is um, on place four. This is, um, this is an interesting company because they are only specialized in mattresses, no other furniture. And then on place number five, this is Home24, my, my former company. Um, they are doing very good in Germany and they are the biggest at the moment um, if we compare it from our point of view that means only furniture and accessories because the auto group is also selling other white uh, white um, white goods etc so what is interesting here is that you cannot find Wayfair for example but Wayfair is also um, in our market and they are doing quite good but they have problems. They are not so successful in Germany um, than they are in, in USA, for example. But um, from my experience, I guess they should also catch around 100 million euros right now. So maybe they are also under the top 10. And what is also missing are the local stores, the brands like Hoefner, Triple X Lutz uh, and all these companies, because they don't tell us the, the numbers only for their online business. So we can only estimate and for that reason in all statistics you cannot find these big brands. So the volume of the furniture segment in Germany is if we have a look at 2019 for example, um, the whole um, furniture segment in Germany is about 38 billion euros. That's quite a big number but only 7 billion out of this um, is made by online business. So you have a very, very good potential to grow here. But how is the question? Because all the big players so far couldn't drive it. And if you have a look at the next file, you can see furniture and houseware compared to other consumer goods in Germany. And it's, it's really obviously that we Germans, we love to buy furniture and household uh, items, accessories and so on offline. We are not used in buying online. I mean, maybe due Corona crisis, maybe that will increase. I don't know. But there are big, big barriers um, in the furniture segment to buy furniture online. As you can see from that chart. Yes. The big, let me... So the main online barriers are distribution, as we heard from Deepak as well, we have big volumes, and also the return process. This is too complicated for the customers very often. And what is also a big barrier is that um, the missing visualization and testing of the product. You cannot feel and touch it and people need more emotion if they're buying a sofa for their home or a sideboard. They need to touch it, to feel it, to see it in real. And um, this is, um, this is a big challenge for the future. I guess with overcoming these barriers through omni-channel concept, the online sales could have a considerably growth potential in the German furniture market. Like click and collect, save the sale, return everywhere, pick up store processes. There are many ideas where you can, you can use these omni-channel uh, omni concepts. Um, and for the consumer, the best probably would be both out uh, uh, best out of both worlds. No, for the consumer, the best would be out of two of both worlds. But um, yeah, and for that reason, there are not many pure players anymore. For example, Home24 has some pop-up stores and flagship stores, and also Obanara, um, other brands, online brands, uh, they are planning to show the, their goods also on the floor to convince the people. 
um, but especially to connect their virtual furniture with emotions. This is the most important thing and the biggest challenge in future. Big players of the local store, store business are not able to take over the online business, as we could see from the low share of 7 billion euros compared to 38 billion euros, the whole market size. And the customers nowadays have a totally different expectation. expectation. A modern shop with old structures, as you can find them in the local furniture stores. This isn't contemporary anymore. It's very difficult to, to be successful only by having a good product assortment, customer service and price. With these arguments, you cannot convince a customer anymore. Even if hard facts like quality price assortment are more important than soft facts, facts like uh, customer service, social media, it doesn't mean that you can neglect it. The customer expects the perfect process from order to delivery with all kinds of aspects. Quality, short delivery time, customer service, very good price performance, return management, contact services, product presentation, description, picture, user-friendly website and navigation. All these points are standard for him today. Add-ons like recommendation, uh, recommend, recommending systems, apps, and innovative customer communications and service are nice to have and help a lot to differentiate from competitors. But times are over when online was only price-driven. Especially in the furniture segment, the criteria searching for inspiration through changing themes and product worlds has above average importance. This is super, super important. You have to bring emotion to your brand or to your product or to your web page. I mean, there are some criteria who are coming up. It's still new, but some technologies will help in future like augmented reality or virtual reality. But at the moment, this is not standard but it's nice to have and in future it will be more, more, more and more important. Um, what we all can feel probably also in, in India and all over the world is that there is a kind of value change. Everything is getting more emotional. Yesterday, values like performance, technology, quality was the most important thing. Today, reputation, charisma, attitude, personality is getting more and more important. Yesterday, um, we had a clear focus on function of the products. And today, you need an experiential fascination. You have, to, yeah, you have to make your customer interested in with something. Um, yesterday, the focus was on demand. Today, we more and more important are emotional values, moral, also meaning. You can upload your, you can load your, your brand or your product with these kind of emotions and the values and in former times also more important was the price performance everything was focused on price you know all the the cheap chinese products came and we were buying like hell but now you know we are, we have all, uh, everything and it's getting more and more uh, important that um yeah you have psychological motives in addition to it you know if you it's not enough to have the cheapest chair it should be nice or it should be yeah, it should help to make your home more beautiful, however. So everything is getting more and more emotional. That means also that e-commerce is getting more and more emotion emotional and more personal. The internet makes everything very transparent for the consumer. You can buy and sell global. Offers are very good to compare. And um, a lot of retailers are buying same items for the sa from the same suppliers. So if this happens, you have a very strong price competition. I don't know if that makes sense in future because con the consumer is able to compare the prices from all over the world. And I can also buy my product from West Ham uh, UK. You know, I don't have to buy it here in Germany. So the question is, how can I win the attention of potential customers and keep in their mind for a long time. And here I'm working with a very interesting approach. I don't know if you ever heard about it, the limbic approach. By the way, I was studying marketing um, economics, but um, mainly and, and um, one of my favorite um, skills are um, it's marketing. 
So um, this is a very new, it's not very new, but uh, the companies are not used using this limbic approach. They are more focused on, on these older marketing instruments. Um, and for that reason, I want to show you the difference. Maybe probably it's the difference what I'm doing compared to other marketing experts. Um, this is a very good example. Define your target group. I mean, the most important thing, if you want to have an OEM brand, assortment, um, a web shop, you need to know your target groups. We all know that. But um, with the Olympic approach, you can see we have on the left side, we have, we have a picture of Ozzy Osbourne. On the right side, we have a picture of Prince Charles. And if you use a classic demographic target group definition, what we all know from marketing experts, both people belong to the same target group because they have the same criteria. They are both men, they are both 71 years old, they, are, they have both more than 1 million euro income per year, they have both more than one child, and they live in a big city. But you can imagine how um, difficult it is to optimize a web page for both characters or find the right product um, for both characters. And with the limbic target group definition, both personalities would belong to different target groups and you would be able to address them successfully and constructive. So if you're interested in this approach, um, it's really, really important to get, if you want to make your brand more emotional, you have to, you should work with, lim with this limbic approach. It's really interesting. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time, but you, you will find it if you Google limbic approach, I guess there are more experts in the market and this is a very, very interesting instrument. And this is part of, of my success so far. That's why I wanted to show it to you. This is my secret. <laughs> so if you're, working, if you're working with target groups, first of all, how can I win the long-term attention of potential customers? This is the main question for us all. As soon as you have defined your target groups with existing marketing tools like personas or others, I would really recommend hardly to segment them into limbic types, as I explained already. And this approach will give you a clear roadmap, their techniques and everything, um, how to address your customers emotionally from a different point of view. And for, for these different limbic types who are existing, um, there are difficult co uh, different communication codes. How to use product name, names, for example, how to use product descriptions, colors, and shapes. All these influence, influences the opinion of the customer. Um, most of the buying decisions are made by our subconscious. And with the limbic approach, it is possible to get a view on into what we marketing people are calling the black box of our buying decision. It's really, really interesting. If you found it out, and if you, if you use this roadmap, which you get out of this limbic type, um, then you, can, you are able to charge your brand posit positively. And this is very important for future. So if your goods or, or your brand is positively charged, you have the following, following advantages. Distinguish from the competition, it's easier to win new customers, you can retain customers very close, and um, the probability of recommendation increases a lot. Research in, in this area of neural marketing are showing that buying processes are unconsciously and is really strongly influenced by emotions. So who is winning hearts is winning customers. This is always my slogan. So how can you achieve a positive charge brand? You have to address the emotions to your customers on all communication channels, pictures and videos. I don't want to go in detail. You can read it there. Pictures and videos cause emotions. Don't show only the function of the product. Try to show that your product is perfect to get positive reactions on the environment or how nice a ex, um, experience could be with your product. You know, uh, the customer have to feel it that they need it because it makes my home nicer or it helps me with something else. Then frame your product with storytelling. This is very, very important. 
not use the an ideal circumstances is if you have pictures or videos who are beautiful and, and this is a part of your storytelling. You have to create everything around that. Use only relevant content. If you have emotional pictures or text which are not relevant for the, um, for the web page, don't use it. Then support customer engagement. Build a personal relationship to your customer. You can use social media channels to communicate with your customers like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And you have to work continuously on these channels. Otherwise, you have a negative effect. It's really important that you don't stop. And the last point is use AR or VR applications. Yeah, sometimes it's not possible at the moment, but it's more, getting more and more uh, important for future. That's why I put it here. So, so if you are a retailer, and the question is, what can I do? If you have mainly local retail stores, develop a new brand for your customer target group, who is a little bit different from your main advertisement language and totally different from your CI. I've showed you already that in between one target group, you can have different limbic types. So address, put one out of this and address one brand to this new type of limbic, uh, of this new limbic type and work hard on it. Um, then integrate a branded shop in your stores and on your web shop. shop. All brand communication has to be same everywhere on each channel that you're using, on each sales channel. Then it's very important that you have a storytelling about the brand. Think about it as early as possible. What is the whole brand about? What is the product around about? The whole story has to be um, logic. I did a private label brand for a furniture company. It's not long ago and it was um, and we used all these concepts very stringent and the target was more than achieved. It was really beautiful to see it. Nobody believed in it. The products haven't been totally different, only slightly different. And it worked, worked out really well. If you are a pure player and you, you're thinking, what can I do? Do a special collection or brand, it's the same, which is addressed to a particular customer group within your target group. It's the same. Try to address a different style of your target group. Integrate a branded shop on your web shop. And if you have local stores, try to find areas in your stores where you can present your OEM goods and the floor, the wall, color, everything has to be different. So it has to be obvious that this is a different, different brand in, in your own brand. Use social media channels for the market launch. And it can be very helpful to support the brand awareness with pop-up stores from time to time to make your products and your brand more emotional. It can be also very um, helpful if you use a testimonial to support the emotions and pictures and the storytelling. Um, this is um, the example about Deepak was talking. Um, we developed once a private label um, brand for an online company. Um, and I would like to show to you later how I did it in detail. This was really, really successful. Um, it was it was a beautiful work and it's still going on. So if you are a startup, look for a niche and work on a particular target group as well. You need to use platforms like Wayfair or eBay, Amazon, however because it's too expensive if you want to do all the marketing on, on, on your own, or you have, you have a, a big investor who spends the money for marketing, but otherwise you cannot survive because the big players, um, they are using all the words with, uh, on ad, Google AdWords, it's super expensive. So you need to find uh, new ways. You have to work on social media seriously, as I told you before. If you want to start with it, you have to continue. If you have longer breaks in it, on Instagram, for example, it will be very negative. You're losing customers. They won't follow you anymore. And it, you have to invest money um, in gifts for influencers. This can be very effective as long as it brings you visitors. You have to, you have to look if, the, if this influencer is really so successful that they are saying, um, I'm still working on my own brand color in March where I'm using 
or where I try to, to fulfill all these uh, points. And I launched it in last September. Uh, and I've made the experience that the more personal your brand is and the more authentic, the more people are interested in your whole brand. I don't know if I will succeed. Maybe we'll talk about it next year. But I'm very passionate. I have a lot of passion for it. And um, yes, as I told you before, who is winning hearts is winning customers. So I try to win more and more customers every day. So now I want to come back. I want to, I want to show you on an example how I developed or how you can develop um, uh, OEM brand or collection. Um, there are five phases of ideation. A lot of people are thinking that ideation or, or uh, developing a new brand is only intuitive uh, work. This is not true. You have to go through all five phases. Otherwise, you will not be able to succeed. First of all, you need an overall claim. What should be the idea? Second, collecting. That means you collect all important information around the task, make a lot of research in the market, what are the competitors and so on. Then you have to ask around, you do some brainstorming. I really mean to ask around. Sometimes it's really crazy what comes out and I all note it down. Um, fourth step is selection. If you have noted down a lot of material, you have to assort it. And at the end, if it's clear what you want to use, and if there's a, a good idea out of it comes out of it, then you can develop um, the whole idea and you can work, could work on products or brands or collections. But all details have to be defined and you have to express your idea here. I will show it on the, on the example of the Eva Padberg collection. This is, um, this is the, the real example, how it works. First phases of ideation, overall claim. What should be the idea? The idea was our brand awareness should be more female. So I was working for Home24 and it was very, um, very logic, everything. And our customers, yeah, they were, they're missing the kind of inspiration, what we women like to have a nice picture so that I can imagine how it would be feel to have this piece at home. And um, that we wanted to address um, to female, to, to women. Then the second step, collecting. Here, um, that means that I collected all important information around the task. So that was, what is the average age of the target group? Oh, sorry, target group. What are typical categories for women? What are they buying? Um, and we found out, for example, at this particular case, it's bedding, accessories, you know, rugs and carpets. Um, third point, we asked around, we needed, we, we tried to find maybe a German top model or an actor, or maybe we use a French fashion girl. Um, we could do furniture like restoration hardware style and so on. So we were, everything we put on a, on a wall. And then we made a selection, a final selection. selection. Finally, uh, we, we've chosen a German top model, but with an elder age, she was 30 something because this was the age of the target group. And we were focusing on female categories like home textiles, rugs, and so on, what I told you already. We were not touching the furniture business at all. And then to develop, that means we decided Eva Padberg could be the right model. Now we had a name. Her age was fitting perfectly to the target group. She loves natural material. And um, so we've chosen the Bohemian style to develop products. Um, and then we started to develop a, a lookbook for better coverage. We used a second color range with a totally different mood. So we had, at the end, we had two mood boards. As I explained already, in the limbic system, you can address different target group, different types in between one target group. And that, that was what we tried to achieve. Um, now I wanted to, out of this, we had the first step is the semantics, eclectic, lifestyle exclusive, all these values should be included in that brand. And this is something what we wanted to feel with it or yeah, to combine with it. Passion, bohemian, bold, pattern, surprising, urban, cozy. So this was, and from there, 
we were working, we started working on the target group. It's just an example how we did it. And maybe it's helpful for you, I don't know, but I just wanted to show it to you. We have a demographic profile. It, the ta target group was female, 24 to 40 years old. The background, they have a sense for aesthetics, haptics, they love to mix and match. They need an exciting individual, individual look. And we planned online and offline activities, blogs, Pinterest, shopping, etc. Offline um, activities, friends, uh, traveling. This is what Eva Patberg was interested in, career, lifestyle, and sports. We all want, we, we wanted to create a perfect um, storytelling around her. And this came out of it. This were the inspiration, the mood boards. On the left hand, we had a collection of cozy cocooning. We called it like this. It was more natural. The color co code was more natural. And on the right side, you see the collection Bohemian Bold. This was the first mood board, just how it could look like. Then we went into detail a little bit more and focusing on textiles and small furniture. Materials with structure, metallic, poppy colors like pink, orange, yellow, blue, green. This was very new in the German market. You haven't seen that before. Then this was the color palette. You have to define a color palette, of course. The second mood was cozy cocooning. Here we did the same. It's the same. And at the end, these have been, this is a few, yeah, selection of the pictures from the advertisement. And, um, the results were really overwhelming. We didn't expect it that it was so successful, but um, yes, and it still continues, con continuing like now. Yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. Unfortunately, the time is short, and I have to hand it over to Deepak again. I had to rush a little bit. Thank you so much, Monica. We have um, many um, praises for you in our chat section and in our question answer section for you and both uh, Deepak. Um, so um, there are many barriers which prevent customers from buying furniture and accessories online compared to offline. That's what you talked about. And um, personalization and emotionalization also linked to the limbic approach, which is very interesting, could bring a uh, big change in the game. There are many takeaways uh, from uh, your presentation. Five phases personally I really like between the ideation and fruition. They will surely guide our viewers. And thanks for sharing with us your personal journey of developing a new brand, which is, you know, um, so successful in Germany. Yes, sometimes you're lucky and it, and it works. But I guess my, my secret is this limbic approach. You should try it. Definitely, especially in these challenging times when uh, COVID-19 is playing uh, with everyone's emotions, you know, yeah, limbic approach. That increases. Yeah, it will increase it in future so. as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if so, there are questions, yeah, they can write me an email or let me know. I am, yeah, I'm here in Germany. <laughs> you can reach me here. Uh, could I ask um, uh, Mr. Uh, Ravi K. Pasi, our chairman of EPCH, to share his thoughts on this presentation before we take up a few question answers of the viewers. Our chairman, Sri Pasi ji. Sir, can you hear us? I think he can't hear us. Uh, in the meantime, could I request um, R.K. Varmaji to share his thoughts on the presentation with us? I sent you the presentation by email or? I think, Murduji, there are some questions. I think uh, Deepakji and uh, Monica can reply them. Okay, so let's take up the question. Ravaji, that is better. Uh, yeah, no, please. Okay. So Deepa, would you like to take any question? Uh, we have few of them. I request all our other viewers, if they have any queries, to please uh, pose their questions in the question answer section. Yeah, sure, we can do that. So uh, we can 
I'm just looking at it. So there is one from Mr. Salat knowing Faruqi. Can we invite any buyer? I mean, this is when we see all the buyers standing the fair packaging. So one question is how can we keep the packaging friendly for textiles and floor covering? I mean, in case of textiles, uh, it's very, very easy because uh, now lots of buyers are switching to, uh, you know, uh, uh, the packaging made from the fabric itself, you know, like if you are doing the bedding and sheet sets and duvet covers, so they take it in that same fabric. And if the fabric is 100% organic or uh, got certified, then it's it's a sustainable and eco-friendly packaging. And you can also move to, you know, things like jute and adopt uh, uh, cotton, 100% cotton, which is in dredge form, not like dyed and uh, printed. So this will answer Damini's question. So there's a question about how can we in touch with Monica Simon from Munir Bari. So we will share the contact details of the panelists in the end. So you can get in touch with them. And you can also get in touch with me if you have any information, if you need anything from Monica, then uh, we are always working together. So then there is one question from Avi Singh from Monica that says, uh, what has been your experience in influencer marketing? Is it an expensive or effective as Google AdWords? I think this is a very good question. Monica addressed this, but uh, I would let her, you know, dig a little deeper into this now. Let's Monica, talk now? Like to... Yeah. Let's so there is... now? Yes, I mean, yeah. my experience with influencer marketing is that the category um, lifestyle and furniture is not that important um, from the influencer point of view than other categ categories like um, electronics. Yeah, you know, the performance on electronics goods are much more uh, um, successful but compared to google adwords it's much cheaper and whenever i i showed uh, i have a, a story another influencer who's doing a story with one of my products i can see that i have a lot of uh, visitors on my homepage, and i have sales on particular items Monica, I can't hear you. I don't know. I cannot hear you. I'm not sure about other parts, panel, uh, participants. Hello. There's a lot of disturbance in your audio, Monica. Yeah, yeah. But I did nothing. Yeah, now it's okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, it, is, uh, it is successful, even if it's less successful than if you're using other influencers or categories like electronics but that's that's the same like furniture are difficult to sell in general it doesn't depend on on the channel so um but it's much cheaper to use influencers than google adwords for example so are booking on on um words like sofa chair desk table however and it's difficult to compete with those so i'm using Table. I send a coffee table to influencer and they are they are um, making a story out of it. I have a lot of visitors on my on my web shop, what I can see, and I'm selling selling it very often, this particular item. I mean it's up to you how much money you want to spend on, on marketing. I just would like to add here that, you know, as well as Google AdWords are concerned now with so many players in the game and especially these pure players and marketplaces, it's almost impossible to get the word, the right, right word. So if you are putting some money on a word, uh, it's, it's almost impossible to get it because they, they have so much of venture capital funding to burn that small players just cannot get it. So uh, Google AdWords is not an option. Uh, it seems easy and interesting. If you go to any marketing consultant, he can easily say digital marketing, SEO and Google AdWords. But practically, I mean, social uh, influencer marketing, this is a slow and steady building of the game, you know, through, I mean, it's, it's, it's also a business in itself now. I mean, I know a couple of companies, uh, in fact, quite a few companies in the US, it's their business to bring the, bring the influencers and the brands together and do this marriage. You know, if I would like to add that and not any influence, uh, every influencer who says he is or she is influencer and has, I don't know how many followers, sometimes they also uh, bought these followers. So have to look really deeply what is the uh, influencer who was, um, who's really good and who's the influencer who bought some followers. 
Yeah, it's so a I business think it's, on its own. It's a own own business this year, yeah. these years. Yeah, it's a business, and before you're giving your money to somebody, I mean, make sure that uh, that person is worth it. Because otherwise, I mean, this brand story and initial euphoria takes all the money that you need later down the line when the thing starts to get a little difficult in the business. Okay, so uh, then we have. So there's this uh, question by Amit. Mm -hmm. He says that uh, if anyone uh, wants to start a new business online, do we have some reliable consultants who can help us in the initial setup of process and guide us initially? Uh, there are lots of people in the market. I have a couple of friends, so you can write to me and I can connect you with them. They can help you to get online, but then it's a game. So you have to discover for your own business what it is and find the right set of people. Because as far as creating a website, I mean, there are, uh, this is a technology space. It's a digital space and it's a uh, very dynamic. So creating a website, getting an SEO thing set up uh, and getting a product management system set up is very easy. But after that, everything is very complicated. So it simply depends that how much you can manage and what kind of technology you are ready for. Because there is a huge amount of technology available in the market. And once, if somebody wants to get into an online space now, uh, it's very funny space. You know, there are acronyms like PIM, ERP, PAM, everything is going on. And it makes people who don't understand crazy, you know, completely crazy, especially, you know, especially businessmen like us, that we deal in products. And then suddenly you sit with a consultant and a tech guy and he's giving you these six, seven uh, swanky kind of, you know, definitions. And, but actually these technologies are making big differences and that's, that's how the big businesses are driving their businesses. So yes. And also, right, yeah. if we are talking about the furniture and lifestyle segment, I would also like to, to add that you need a niche and you need a passion for it. You need, a, you need to live your idea because the audience will feel the difference. This is very important, that you have a vision and you, you have to live it and fulfill it with life and continuously and stringent. You need your own story. Yeah, I think that's the key ingredient now. I mean, it's uh, on one side, it's a pure commercial business. Somebody can run it if he has money and if he can get everything together. But on the other it. side, it's, it's uh, you know, it's passion like Monica is driving Carla and Marge. Go and check out her, her website. So you will see that how the passion, creativity, everything comes together. You will end up getting a lot of inspiration from there. And you need to find these kind of brands who inspire you, you know, and give you the direction that what can be done. I gave you in the initial part of my presentation, I talked about Vestel, but they are the big people. You can always find uh, the second one, which is on my list, uh, is also a beautiful brand. I love it. So check it out. And we are happy to help you with some contacts that we have in the industry. So Mrituji, I think we have answered all the questions. Yes. And um, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I hope our viewers, uh, all the people who are attending this webinar from all across the world will definitely benefit from your expertise and experience. It was wonderful having both of you here. And uh, we'd also like to thank uh, RK Varmaji and Mr. Pasi, who was also here with us uh, a little while ago for joining us for this webinar. And uh, if uh, before, you know, we end the session, could you please share your uh, contact details on the screen with our viewers? I will just share my screen. It yes, please do that. Snapshot. So that's their email. Deepak and Monica, they both are available on this email. So you may contact them for any of your query. They are always there for, to help you. Um, so with that, we wind up this session on behalf of Export Promotion Council for Handicrafts, which is running this four-day virtual fair, the IHDF Textile Fair, which is on till 18th. So please uh, do join this virtual fair and see how you can avail this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for inviting me. Bye-bye. Take care.